Hey, great it's We're looking at uh, 8 math, algebra 10.5. We're looking at the nth term. So uh, we're going to start off. We're going to look at um, just some words and some uh, expressions and what do they actually represent. So anytime you see a number, anytime you see that, you should always be thinking about a variable. And I've chosen n today as uh, arbitrarily. It, arbitrarily. It doesn't have to be n, though. It could be any variable. So 2 times a number. If this is a number, then 2 times a number has to be twice that, so 2n. And just to keep in mind that we always put the coefficient, the number first. We do not put n2. It's always, that's wrong, it's always 2n, or the, the coefficient first. So a number times itself could be written two ways. It could be n times n, or n squared. 3 times a number minus 5. We've got 3n minus 5. So 3 times a number minus 5. And finally, 1 half of a number is subtracted from 25. So you see that word from. As soon as you see the word from, it means that we're starting with 25. That's what we've got. And we're taking away the rest of that from 25. So you should see 25 should be first minus n over 2, or 1 half of a number. So we're going to be looking at the nth term. And a lot of people get uh, really, you know, sort of wiggy about this, like what is the nth term? You, you see it, it's pretty confusing. I'll try to explain it as best I can. So when you have a sequence like 1, 2, 3, 4, you can really f easily figure out the next term. So let's say your teacher says, hey, here's a sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, what is the next term? Uh, it should be pretty obvious. You should go, oh, well, it's 5, right? Because it's 4, and you know, uh, then 5 follows uh, 4. But what about this series? You get 2, 5, 8, 11, 14. How about that one? So you're like, okay, well, I'm seeing 2 to 5, I'm adding 3, 5 to 8, I'm adding 3. Okay, I'm adding 3. So the next term is going to be 17. But sometimes you don't want to figure out the next term in the series. Maybe you want like the 41st term or the 383rd term. So in this sequence, it's really easy. I can say the 41st term is going to be 41. In this series, the 41st term, that's a little harder to do because you got, I mean, you could actually write out 383 terms in the series. Like if you're trying to find the 383rd term in the series, you could actually write them all up, but nobody's got time for that. Like that takes forever. And that's where, uh, so here I'm trying to write it out. And, and by the time I get to the 10th or the 11th, I'm, I'm done, right? I'm not going to waste my time. So if I told you the nth term for the series of 2, 5, 8, 11, 14 is 3n minus 1. Now I can find any term I like. Because remember, this means 3 times a number subtracted by 1. All of these numbers in the series belong to this expression right here, or the nth term. So I'll give you an example. So I start off with 3n minus 1, and I, see my, I want to find out what the first term in the series is. So you have the red first and the, run, the one right there. So I took my n and I substituted the, the one or the first term, and I actually carry out the operation. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 is 2. So the nth term is just a, a way of expressing um, any number within a series. Same thing goes if, if your teacher said, okay, what is the second term of 3n minus 1? Well, all I need to do is I replace my n right there with 2, because I'm looking for the second term, and I carry out the operation. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. And you're going to start seeing a pattern here. The third term, I replace my n of, within the original expression, the nth term, with 3, because I'm looking for the third term, and that's why they're red, and I carry out the operation. And this is where it's fantastic, because what if your teacher said, I want the 41st term? You're not going to write out 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17. It's going to take you forever. So now, because we have the expression for the nth term, we can just take our n out and replace it with 41st, or 41. Carry out the operation, and then you do your subtraction. So there's a really simple way to find the uh, nth term. What about backwards? We're told that the nth term of a number pattern is 3n plus 5. So this is what we're, we're working with, this little algebraic expression right here, 3n plus 5. And then we're told, what is the term number when the term value is 305? And remember in class we talked about this, that is is equals. So the first thing you're going to do is write the equation. 
we take our first nth term expression, 3n plus 5, and because it says this is 305, take a look over here. Can you see that this is 305? What I'm trying to find out is what is the number when this is 305? So it's kind of backwards, right? We're looking at 122 is the value and the 40, and the, what is the, the term? Oh, it's 41. So we're going to work backwards here. You solve the equation. So you write, rewrite the first line, which is right here. You've got 3n plus 5 is equal to 305. Now, what's happening to, uh, to n? It's being added by 5, so we're going to subtract by 5. But we do it to both sides because it's a balanced equation. Remember, always remember that we're doing... Uh, I'll try and draw a really fast balance here. There we go. Whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. So if I'm going to subtract 5 on the left, I also have to subtract 5 on the right. That leaves me with 3n is equal to 300. Now what's happening on the left-hand side to our n? If you take a look here, it's th times 3. It's being multiplied by 3. So it's being multiplied by 3. So the opposite of multiplied by 3 is divide by 3. If I'm going to divide one side by 3, I have to divide the other side by 3. These are the best division signs you've ever seen. And we get n. So that means that for this expression, when 3n plus 5 is equal to 305, the number that I'm looking for is 100. I want you to solve each equation and then verify your solution. So 3x plus 4, if I'm adding 4 to x, I need to subtract 4, right? And I'm going to subtract both sides by 4, 13 minus 4. I'm going to have 3x is equal to 9. And what's happening to x right now? It's being multiplied by 3, and the opposite is dividing by 3. But I divide both sides by 3, and I get x is equal to 3. And I can verify. I'm going to take that 3, I'm going to stick it right in there, I'm going to say, well, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 4, does that equal 13? 13 equals 13. Perfect. 12 is equal to 4x. This one's pretty straightforward. What's happening to x? It's being multiplied by 4, and the opposite, divide by 4. So our x equals 3. I plug that x equals 3 back into here, and I say, does 4 times 3 equal 12? It does. This one, a little harder. I've got 2n, and I've got a number 5 and an n and 17. First thing you're going to do is you're going to group all your n's. If I have two n's here and I have one n here, I have a total of three n's. So I just rewrite it. 3n plus 5 is equal to 17. And then it's just like the other ones. We're just going to isolate the variable. We're going to get, we'll get rid of this um, plus 5 right there by subtracting by 5. But we're going to do both sides, right? So 3n plus 5 minus 5 is equal to 17 minus 5, or 12. We divide both sides by 3 because that's the opposite of multiplication, and n equals 4. Now this time when you plug it back in, everywhere you see an n, you have to do multiply by 4 here, and here you're adding by 4. So 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, plus 4 is 17. And this one is just like the other ones. I'm going to be subtracting by 15. You're actually going to get negative 5 is equal to 5a. Divide by 5, divide by 5, and a is equal to negative 1. Plug it back in, and you should be done. So you get a problem sometimes. Like Mr. Lemoyne saves 40 bucks each week. He has 220 as his account to begin with. When will he have a total savings of 620? You need to write an equation to solve this problem and then solve the problem. So he's starting off with 220, right? So I'm going to type this because I think it'll probably be a little clear. So he's starting with $220. And um, I, I want to find out when I'm going to have a total savings of 620. So I'm going to take my, my the 620, I'm going to subtract 220, uh, which is equal to 400, right? Because this is the amount that I want to get to, but I already have 220. So I'm basically I'm finding out how, mo how long is it going to take for me to earn $400. So thinking of it in terms like that, it's if I make 40 bucks each week, how many weeks is it going to take to make $400? So $40 every week, but how many weeks, so times n will it take to make 400? So let's rewrite that. That just looks like 40n. Then we just I'll go back to pen. We're going to divide both sides by 40. 
Wow, that's amazing. And we got n is equal to 10. That means that it will take 10 weeks to make that $400. So you can actually write out this whole thing as one big equation. You could have, <laughs> that was the bell. Uh, I think we'll stop there.